Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Capital. Here's some wildflowers in front of my house and they do quite well so they're still colorful. My birch tree here leaves are starting to change color and I filled up the bird seed in the in the feeder there. A few leaves but uh, I'll sh give an update later. They keep a falling. Okay, Friday night football. I'm heading downriver as far south as you go downriver for uh, a downriver league game between, uh, and this is for all the marbles here. This is for the championship, the division, league, whatever. Yeah, we're under the lights. This was week number eight, and Wyandotte Roosevelt is going to be here in Gibraltar. So I took 75 south to uh, Gibraltar Road, then south on Jefferson, and I'm pointing to where the school is. It's near Lake Erie Metro Park and just east of Gross Eel. And boy, the parking, it was unreal. It was a well-attended game. I had to park out on Jefferson along with a bunch of other people. It was kind of like the overflow parking. There's my evil twin. There's some nice houses here along Jefferson, but here, here's a good look at Marauders, their stadium. Oh yeah, this is a big downriver league game to be sure. That explains the, uh, the crowd. My evil twin's gonna enjoy this game, grant you that. Okay, nice warm Friday. Good day for, or good night for football. Oscar A. Carlson High School is the official name. But you hear Gibraltar High School a lot. And also the Helen C. Shoemate Middle School. So they kind of combined. It's quite the uh, educational facility here. And varsity football versus Wyandotte. So here we go, Friday the 13th. Wow. And this is edition two of Friday the 13th. We had one earlier uh, in the year. Okay, DTE Energy did a thing with trees, so they plopped a big rock down there. Uh, was there an eye in the sky? What was I showing there? I... Okay, there's the middle school. And this is the home of the Marauders, and it looks like a pirate ship from afar. I'll get a closer look here. There it is. Yeah, that's a pirate ship to be sure. And here they have a cannon. I mean, they really do the pirate thing up. Yeah, how about that? It's kind of dark. And I couldn't make out the, I think a certain class donated that. Now here's an even bigger rock. I don't know who plopped that one down there. That's a big one. Okay, five bucks. How can you beat it? Thank you. Then they give you a ticket, admit one. You can't beat the price, really. And so, yeah, it's the seat, kind of like the Cincinnati Bengals or... Almost like the Chicago Bears, that kind of seed, but then with the pirate thing in between, the skull and crossbones. Okay, it's the third quarter. Uh, Gibraltar, the home team, is up 20 to nine over Wyandotte. And Gibraltar kicked off here to start the second half. So Wyandotte has the ball, players Flying all over the place. Even the yellow hankies taking a little trip. Here's a look at the stands. And then even under the stands, they have quite the facility here, actually. The capacity to entertain many a people. And they can even get a peek at the game.
Christian Munoz with the carry for the Bears. Marked out by number 51, Jacob Brown, and number 7, Tyler Cruz. In about seven on the play, second down to three. Opposing side, Wine Dots fans over there, but they have some good band action. Oh, Wine Dot just scored. Got it. So Gibraltar is up 20. Wyandotte has 17. So, ooh, the games are tightening up. Now, this was week eight. Both teams entered this contest sporting a perfect 7-0 record. So the winner of this certainly would have a share of the league championship. And then by virtue, you know, if you win the tiebreaker, no one else, everyone else had a loss. Here are Marauders, and they did this up with stones. This was in one of the end zones. It was kind of the dew, and, and we had some rain, so it was kind of a little slippery, so some kids are doing the, uh, the sliding down the hill. But the, uh, the Bear fans were quite active, and we have a pink out section over on the Gibraltar side, but we'll capture both of these groups. Check out the dancing bear. the same kind of dancing bear that the ladies like to go out and check out. I don't know, but uh, okay, what do we got going here? The game's still 20 to 17, 350 left in the third quarter. are driving him driving here going for the go ahead score student body section in a frenzy. It's up and it's good. And that's gonna make it 24 to 20. So field goal at this point won't top it. Uh, so, wow. We got a game here. 
Start of the fourth quarter. in Bearland, as they do on the Gibraltar side too. And I was kicking myself that I did not uh, catch the halftime show. Got here late. I don't know if that's the trophy for like the winner of the game. Sometimes in these rivalries, they have these uh, trophies. Roosevelt High School. They don't do the W. I guess maybe at the end of the game they might do the W. Alright, 8.30 left in the game. Four point lead for the Bears. The Marauders have some work to do. They have a lot of fun. Yes, they really enjoy themselves. Uh, I'm not musically inclined. Don't have any talent whatsoever, but I can appreciate it. Boy, and they, both bands were awesome. Why not have the traveling band? But Gibraltar, boy, they're doing it up. Hey, and I got the uh, attendance or the enrollment figures for these schools. The Wyandotte Bears 
1,345 students is what they claim to have. The Gibraltar Carlson Marauders have 1,125. So Wyandotte is a little bigger school. That's why they probably, I they had Selection Sunday. I'm doing the audio here on Monday, and I didn't check out the uh, Selection Sunday. Both of these teams made the playoffs. But Wyandotte more than likely is in Division Two, and Gibraltar might be in Division Three. Anyways, Gibraltar's coming back, trying to get that winning touchdown. And uh, they were driving, got to like the 24-yard line. Had a first, first and 10. Now it's third and super long. And uh, time is the factor here now. Uh, that was a nice play. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that probably did them in. That was called back. Now it's... Oh, they replay the down here. Now I think, yeah, oh, they're waving this off, but it's gonna be fourth and super long. Look at this, fourth down and like 20. <laughs> stopped them but that they did and the ball turns over to the Bears on downs and that's pretty much going to be all she wrote the way it was on Friday the 13th. A lucky day for the Bears. They take the championship for the uh, Down River League. They ended up winning week number nine too, so they ended the year a perfect 9-0. And, and Gibraltar Carlson won their last game also, so they uh, they have just the one loss, 8-1. And, and I should have checked, but you know, it's easy enough to check the uh, standings. Now watch the fans here. The student body section, they're gonna rush the field and there they go. If I was younger, maybe I'd be hopping the fence and joining them, but it's not like me to break the law or bend the rules. It's probably a bear trap. Maybe it's uh, just the, uh, the thing that they do for wind on. It also kind of has like W's there. They're pretty doing well in the Down River League for football for year in and year out. Here we're going to get like a team photo. <laughs> You know, I think there's a college team that has a winged helmet like that. If only they could be as successful as the Wyandotte Bears. Holy Toledo 
They need to uh, to get that school in Ann Arbor together. Here, though, what a band they have at Gibraltar. And like I said, I missed the halftime show, but we'll catch a little action here. band has too much fun. They really do. They shouldn't be allowed to have that much fun. All right, 2008. So it's kind of neat that every class um, has their little gig or donation to the school to help things out. But yeah, nothing left here but the traffic. 
That's a Christian pirate ship. Wow. All right, yeah. This was the big to-do in the city of Gibraltar. Wow. Down river. Show Gibraltar some love. Hey, they got a bird feeder. That's cool. Another look at the cannon. And up the way, the police fire city hall. I didn't have time to check out the downtown area. But yeah, now it's walk back a country mile to the car. Actually, Brownstown is where I parked. Brownstown's kind of funny. It's divided up in like three non-contiguous land masses. It's kind of a crazy uh, gig they got going. But yeah, I was hoping my car wasn't towed or nothing. But yeah, here it is. And uh, the website, det.com, if you're concerned maybe with the show times and what channel, where it might be airing, mainly Comcast. Kathleen says it airs with AT&T. I have WOW now, so I can't even monitor my own show because uh, WOW doesn't have public access or access to public access. My evil twin had a great time. For five bucks, you, couldn't, you can't beat it. You really can't. A uh, lot of good fishing downriver and close to the Lake Erie Metro Park. We'll see the entrance here, but I stopped here at... Redskins Saloon. Seems like an old country kind of place here, but there was quite the crowd. Uh, across the way, you can get your archery supplies and I guess your fish bait and so forth. But yeah, that was a neat little uh, bar, though, kind of well, set up for the, the hunters and the people that fish and so forth. Uh, the outdoorsman. North on I 75, and I'm going to exit at Telegraph. Nice, pleasant drive. I uh, see the beautiful city of Gibraltar. I'll be back. I've been there before, but I need to explore the, uh, the downtown a little bit better. Okay, I live near the uh, football bridge, so you can see it's football inspired, and I had to cook something in the microwave. Oh, yeah, and then here's the map. I love looking at maps. So here was the Lake Erie Metro Park, and uh, I took uh, Huron River Drive back to I-75, so this is what I took. So I went through the city of Rockwood, another great little community, and then north on 75. This map is great, though. It delineates all the cities with different colors. So there's Gibraltar, and part of the Down River League, you have Woodhaven and also Trenton. And then it continues north up to uh, Melvindale. 10 cities all in the Downriver community. What a great league. It's fun to follow them. Uh, let's see. That's the end. I got to switch tapes here. Okay. You know the routine. Go ahead and fix a sandwich. Grab a cold beverage from the fridge. Okay, the second tape's in. Better hurry. All right. Press play. Okay, so now we're in the second segment, going downtown. Imagine that. I love that sign, and I love that song, downtown. But then uh, there's a, like a Motown subdivision here. All the streets are named for uh, Motown groups. Anyways, here's Jumbo's Bar, a recent uh, mural painted on the side of their establishment. Uh, to good friends and happiness. I'm all on board with that. So I'm going to do the free parking here. And the reason why I'm coming by is not for, even though the Yankees are winning, they ended up losing to Houston. Here's a great pinball game. The Walking Dead. Pinball is making a comeback. But look at this scary guy. But uh, yeah, there's probably some pinball wizards out there. Last man standing. Okay, this is why I came by. The Pistons. We can call them the Detroit Pistons again. Can you believe it? After 39 years, they're actually the Detroit Pistons. God, take a picture. Um, Nicole Curtis. Okay, det.com. So I decided, hey, I'm going to drive a little closer yet. And I actually went to the Temple Bar. 
park there. Little Caesars Arena. This is this is where it's all going down. The Detroit Pistons. God, I call them the Pistons of Auburn Hills, but they are back. This was their opening night, first game. Oh, yeah. And I haven't been inside yet. The Little Caesars Arena. Didn't see any of those previews or open houses. So that's kind of a bummer, but I'll get a spinorama around the arena from the outside. One of these days I'll buy a ticket. I've never seen a sign like that with a bike. But uh, I guess you can make them up whatever you need. Here the schedule they're advertising. Little Caesars uh, Arena is, we go with the acronym now, LCA Arena. There you go, Detroit Pistons. And they were playing tonight, 7 p.m. Kid Rock owns that Made in Detroit thing. The Pistons were doing okay. Uh, had the lead. to see how close I could get because I heard you could patronize some of the places uh, but I'm not exactly sure how that works uh, because they had people keeping an eye on things but this was an open courtyard I like this area <laughs> about copyright stuff too even if you show uh, the screen so I only show it for a brief second a lot of times just to show the score uh, 189 so the Pistons are doing uh, good well this is the all four major sports teams they're as tightly knit uh, or more so than any other city uh, the youngsters were out here Oh, we're winding down. Yeah, they can do a basketball game in two hours, 18 minutes. U of M can do a football game in just under four hours. Oh. But yeah, it's amazing how quick they can do it. Here it's kind of like a ghost dad. But that's, I love the, the real ones. That's not bad. But here, Hotel Eddie Stone, this would be the next project hopefully they start working on. Uh, and that could be some upscale uh, living for millennials that want to be close to the action. Uh, a parking deck, not too attractive. <laughs> and the parking is pricey. Holy cow. And then it had to be some VIPs. I don't know if that's Mike Pence or whatnot. It almost looks like uh, that kind of security detail. 40 bucks to park close by. Are you kidding? That's highway robbery, but uh, I'm sure they'll get people to do that. Here's the, I think it's like five and a half million dollar house. And certainly in close proximity, but they're holding out for the big bucks. But there it is. Hotel Eddie Stone, that's like my version of Hotel California. You can stay, but you can never leave, kind of, however. Here, uh, the American Hotel, that's vacant. And taking the detour, the sidewalk detour, which are the best. Here, um, beer. It's a red light district. And also, a little rainbow district, too. Some people's panties in a bunch. But the cast corridor, this is it. Take a walk on the wild side, no less. It used to be, well, back in the day, a lot more exciting. But now it's getting a little gentrified, but that's okay. Uh, 
it was rough around the edges. Now it's kind of getting uh, the hipster kind of thing. Okay, well, that was it for the opening night of Pistons. But we're going to go back to the well here with Friday Night Football. I've been negligent in weeks past on doing the Friday Night Football, but this is my alma mater. Every time I see a bubbly face, I get the tingles in a silly place, starts in my toes. All right. So, and parking was at a premium here, and if the assistant principal isn't here by now, too bad, because that's where I'm parking. But Etzel Ford High School, who it's been a few years since I graduated, it was way back in 1978. And I know I'm dating myself by saying that. Whew. Yeah, no spring chicken anymore, I'll tell you that. But, um, yeah, this brings back memories, certainly. I'm trying to get the uh, scoreboard in focus, but it is old school. It's probably maybe not quite as old as me, but it's the light bulbs. The old, not LED. But, hey, something just went down. Pass is complete. Black and white, Hill Eagles. For the life of me, I can't get this in focus. First and hold. Touchdown, Thunderbirds. It's up, and it's good. And then I got here late again. God, that's my life story. So I miss the halftime band, and I'm a big band groupie. I really am, but I miss them. Kick myself. Shame on me. Here they got student passes for 50 going, how much for a ticket? But it is $5 here, and this one, you get coupons. And plus, you can scan it if you want. How about that? But on the back is where you get the 20% off coupons. And I did the math. If you spend like $25 at the restaurant and use that coupon, it's like you came to the game for free. Kid you not. That's the way it works out. So that's not a bad deal. Plus, you have two coupons there. But that was a look at the food menu. Okay, the uh, Eagles. God, what were they? This was week number nine. And the Eagles had a 7-1 and one record. So they're already going to the playoffs. And Etzel Ford, believe it or not, they've fallen on hard times in years past, or had some lean years, I should say. Their record is actually 6-2. Uh, and two. They're in the playoffs. Both teams are, and uh, I missed the selection Sunday. I'll, look at this. Etzel Ford versus Barry Body. But, yeah, that's kind of funny. Uh, but they have the souvenir attire apparel shop. We're under the lights. Yes, Friday night football. It's like a double header with the kind of an intermission in there in between with the with the pistons. Here the lighting system, that's important. If you're going to have Friday night football, uh, you need the lights. Defend the nest. So yeah, the Thunderbirds, they have a nest up there in the press box, I guess. Who knows? But, yeah, that's what they're trying to do here. They took the lead here. Uh, they were down at the half, 14 to 10. So they're up 17 to 14. Let me see. This game goes back and forth. Let me sh I need to show the scoreboard again. Okay. Got a punt. Kraskin is down there. Oh, yeah. Back. John Thompson on the carry. All right, yeah, it's still Etzel Ford, 17. The guests have 14, but it's hard for this <laughs> camcorder to focus in because it's got the screw-in light bulbs. Yeah. Now the cheerleaders. And, and there's a lot. I always say there's more than just a football game. There's cheerleaders. 
and then there's uh, the concessions, and then the apparel thing. There's the press, the media, the green artificial turf. Oh no, that was too easy it seemed like. Right up the middle and off he scampered and it's up. And, the kick is and it's good. good. 50 tickets are winning number tonight. 0115294. They had a 50-50 raffle thing. And the first person didn't collect, so they had to call another number. So make sure you stay till the end of the, uh, until after halftime when they pull the numbers. Don't leave that early. All right, that's Etzel Ford driving. Third and a couple. That's what Ford is driving here. They want to get the go-ahead touchdown. They're down by four. Oh yeah, buddy, that's good for six. going back and forth and back and forth. So Ferndale has the ball with just over three minutes. Very quiet night, pleasant evening, but uh, it's nice, not windy. But you can still kick around the leaves. That was my evil twin doing that. Yeah, look at the scoreboard. This is, I got up close, but yeah, they have their little sockets and inset is the light bulb. Yeah, this is old school. Thank you for supporting Etzel Ford Athletics. I don't know if they wanted the chipped paint like that or if that's just Father Time taking care of that. This was the Nevco model, or whatever that is. But yeah, maybe they can get a sponsor. Maybe like Ford Motor. <laughs> I like spending their money. But yeah, uh, Etzel Ford High School is right across the street from the Ford Research Facility. So uh, probably plenty of the students that 
attend uh, the high school. Their parents probably work at Ford Motor. My dad did. That's, yeah. But, uh, yeah, he worked there 41 years. How about it? to run cross country so I always liked it running through the trees back here and, and throughout the, the back 40 they have some big stout trees Ferndale's on the move though and oh ooh that was a tough one backbreaker long gain almost got in just short of the goal line Stopped him there, but look at the time though. You almost, oh, what do you do? <laughs> that time Ferndale got in, and they're not going to leave much time on the clock uh, for the Thunderbirds to do anything. 30.5 seconds. Wow. This game was back and forth and back and forth. I saw him throw the yellow hanky. Well, they have the pink out, which is uh, great, and it's, it's like a month-long thing for the, the whole month of October. And so here's the ensuing kickoff. there pretty much sealed the deal uh, and then here we go that's it game over the Eagle fans certainly uh, excited and I think with their attend or enrollment they were probably in division three and that's so Ford would be in division two I like this though where they have the handshake. It's it's only like high school sports they do this, but yeah, it's a nice touch of sportsmanship and, and so forth. And, and certainly a game well played. Uh, and five bucks, how can you beat it? Plus I had coupons. Holy cow, I, it's like I made out ahead in the deal. It's like they almost paid me to go there. But yeah, such fun, but yeah, of course I was rooting for Edsel Ford, but, you know, later on you realize, hey, it's a game. There's lessons to be learned. It's not a, a life or death situation, whether you win or lose. It's, it's what you get out of it and carry on with you the rest of your life as far as lessons, sportsmanship, teamwork, hard work, practice. And that goes for anything, too. The band, that's incredible there's so many activities that uh, you can point to where there's a lot oh that sounds like a lot of psycho babble i better stop talking but uh yeah anyways playoffs are going to start here shortly and the best website ever is mhsaa.com 
And we're going to have time for a photo op here. That stands for Michigan High School Athletic Association. out sections leaving here was the roster so the names positions the grade and so forth so that's the Thunderbird lineup the head coach Mark Tyler the assistant coaches they even had room here for the cheerleaders I haven't seen that before on other programs so that's a nice touch on the back side they didn't have print enough to put Ferndale Eagles up there but Anyways, we'll see who the big boys are. Let's see, 270. That looks like 6'2", and he's just a junior. Head coach, Eric Royal. We'll see how Ferndale does in the playoffs. And they had a big to-do selection Sunday on Sunday, which would have been the 22nd of October. And it's a great five-week playoff season culminating with games at Ford Field for all the championship games uh, the two days after Turkey Day the last of the fans leaving chance for honor team pride that's another lesson or value that can be learned here's the future football star in the making here He's got the energy. I think he tackles his brother. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. He tackled his brother. He'll be a defensive star. He kept him short of the goal line. All right. We're all proud to be American. This is the main entrance here. And Oh, lesson number one. Okay, you miss school, you miss out. Yeah. Definitely. This is the, like, attendance office here. They must have a nest in there, too. Wow, they got them all over the place. Okay, student office, Etzel Ford High School community is committed and yeah, to learning. That's the whole point of it all learned. So 1953-1954. Here, look at the Spirit Bowl. If nothing else, this counts for everything. <laughs> Etzel Ford beat Dearborn this year, and so they won the Spirit Bowl, so we just saw it. Oh, man, they got to keep that thing, like, year after year after year. Dearborn was, the, uh, was our hated rival, so, oh, enjoy that Spirit Bowl. Here, this is a donation from the class of 58 and 59. I don't know what our class did, to be honest with you, but here they got an updated like LED um, signage out front for the school. It's just that it's, uh, the scoreboard's old school. All right, one last look here. And yeah, that's the way it was for uh, week number nine. Playoff start. Okay, now little sleepy time east to Detroit. Hear that football inspired bridge. We got that for like the Super Bowl. But if you look up top, you'll see the footballs. Then I don't even know if they did an update. The wheel cover seems a little shinier, but I think we could make a welcome center or a rest area over there uh, as an approach to Detroit. People land at the airport or they're coming you know, down I-94, they could stop pick up the maps, get all the info, whatever they need. All right, well, I'm here at Eastern Market. He's parked in space number nine. This is the freeway mobile. Wow, we a three-wheeler. 
But uh, Eastern Market is having a lot more as far as residential units and a lot more businesses. It's kind of, you know, people talk about downtown and uh, midtown and so forth and even like Corktown. But Eastern Market is is doing very well uh, on their very own. This is kind of a, a vibrant area. Yeah, a new wave, but yeah, it's got people like to eat and stuff. So you got the food thing going, but you also have the the older kind of buildings, and now you have the artist. And this has been probably brought a lot into people recognizing this neighborhood is just with the artwork. It makes it a destination unto itself. Even at nighttime, some of these are lit up good enough that um, they, they show quite well. And vinyl is coming back. He's upset there, certainly. His uh, album is broke, and that's no longer any good. They have a... a see a wine place or I'm not sure exactly whiskey maybe and this I like Bo Bien fine foods and we had the eye in the sky yeah I came down here this was the a Saturday night but there was uh, an event Detroit a go-go and the free press, I go online and I always access the free press site, so they'll talk about things that are happening that are current right at the moment. And they talked about uh, this group, a, a big tour that was organized um, to actually showcase Detroit and the Motown music and the things affiliated with that and some of the attractions. And... A lot of people came actually from North England. They have a thing called Northern Soul, and they were, they've always been fascinated with Detroit music, particularly Motown. And so this is like a pilgrimage for some of these people. It was kind of strange to hear people that excited about coming to Detroit. You wouldn't typically think that would be possible, but, oh, times... They are a changing. Detroit has kind of got a little bit of a hip feel, but it's, it's got that edge, too. Uh, and there's nothing else quite like it. So it's kind of people's curiosity has peaked uh, a little bit. Then thinking, hmm, I've heard about Detroit. And what they've heard in the past has all been bad. And now it's like uh, they're starting to hear good stuff so they're a little confused they're actually off Shinola time is uh, my clock I'll check it again but they uh, I'm pretty sure I'm within 10 or 15 seconds here we go Detroit versus everybody uh, yeah Detroit is a standalone city we you can't really compare it to 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 no one else but uh and then you scratch the surface and you dust it off a little bit. You might find that uh, and Detroit might be a, a good place uh, for Amazon to locate its second headquarters. And I was thinking earlier today, I actually like this site out there by Detroit City Airport. There's a huge swath of land. At one time, they were going to expand the airport. And they bought a lot of homes in that area, but it's abandoned prairie land right there now. Boy, you could assemble that whole thing. The city probably owns most of that. And then they'd have their own airport, Detroit's, well, Coleman Young Airport, right next door. And good access to I-94, Gratiot, I-75. And it's a huge parcel. It's like you don't really have to do the eminent domain too much. Anyways, uh, this, oh, I'm not going to really have time for the, the music thing. This will be next week's show, but Burt's Marketplace had a big event here for Motown acts, and so they're doing it up here. It's a lot of fun. So tune in next week, and I'll have some good music. Folks, thanks for watching. Uh, good night. You know that
Ajuda! 